okay guys um welcome back to my channel all right and in today's video we're going to be talking about redox titration okay um, a different kind of titration different from acid and base okay uh please for new subscribers those that will be watching our video for the very first time please um kindly hit the subscribe button below thank you very much um, for returning subscribers please do well to thank you for always coming back to watch our video all right um, new subscribers, please do well to subscribe for. Okay. So in today's video, basically, we're going to be talking about titration, but it's not the, the normal type of titration that many of us are very familiar with, the acid and base. So this titration is basically redox titration. So definitely, I'm just going to be explaining the calculations. I'm not going to be carrying out the experiments. Okay, so... The procedures on how to carry out the experiment is in your manual and some of them i'll be displaying it on the screen and hopefully when you get to the lab they'll guide you on how to do it i just had to put up this to guide us on how to you know carry out the calculations i thought this would be much better than you know solving and dropping on the group chat so the equation for the reaction we have um we have the equation here remember every um titration the acid base titration always have a react uh, equation and for example, if you're reacting acid and base, you have um, HCl and NaOH, and that's going to give us NaCl and water. So the the more ratio, the Na and the NB, is always gotten from the um, equation of the reaction. So in this case now, for this reaction, these are the two equations that we have. All right. Now this titration table, basically every titration, if you look at this, um, this um, you can see the empty titration table here. So when you carry out the titration, most likely it's going to look like this. The values we have on the screen was what was obtained last year, okay, during the Aprasical last year. So apparently this year it may not be the same. So please, I want to kind of appeal to each and everybody watching this video. The first thing you have, you don't have to transcopy all of this into your manual. Conduct the experiment, right? If you conduct the experiment and the, at least a trial run, if you conduct the trial and it gives you, you know, something very similar to 9.20, we can oh that means it's kind of close. But if you carry out your experiment and it gave you something different, you don't have to, you know, make it to be you don't have to conform your answers to this. What do I mean? Some persons um you carry out an experiment, for example, since what I have on the screen is 9.20, you want to make sure you get 9.20. Please don't do it. There are cases where there could be a change in reagent or a change in so many parameters that could lead to the answer varying, right? Last year now it's kind of um, very large for a huge change to take place. So you know you don't have to necessarily force your data to match up to this. Nope. If it does not match up, don't force it. Use your data, just follow the procedures I'm going to explain in this video to carry out your calculation. But if you're lucky, and then your titration values corresponds to this. Uh, you can just go ahead and transcopy what I have on this into your manual 100%. But if your titration values from the titration is not the same as what we have on the screen, please, um, you have to go through the video step by step, understand how the calculations have been done, substitute values when necessary. Okay, now, so like I said, this table was obtained last year. Average volume right average is always the the first the second and the third but from the manual they excluded the trial right so that's why we have from the manual they say v1 plus v2 all over two but even if you include the trial you're still going to get the same answer all right so if you include the trial it will not be divided by three the answer will still be the same i left a footnote here i said the values here were the values obtained last semester okay now look at the table here. So look at what I was telling us, the average volume, V1 plus V2 all over 2. So basically the, <coughs> the main aim of this video is to guide us on how to carry out the um, calculations. But before we proceed, um, I also want to appeal once again. Please, if, if you're here for the first time and you actually not um, subscribed to our channel, please just pay two seconds, just tap on the subscribe button below. Thank you very much. At least this encourages us to do more videos. And please take note that subsequent to your practicals, the videos will be you know recorded and I'll be also be sharing them here. 
So be the first to get the updates by not just subscribing, also hit the bell icon. Alright, so here we have, um, they said, weigh 1 grams of potassium iodide and dissolve to get 100 ml solution in a flask. Alright, it, 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 uh, it's an instruction. The next, they say, prepare standard solution of standard um, sodium to your surface solution by dissolving 0.248 grams of this in 100 ml. Right, apparently for the fact that they said dissolving, so most likely this is going to be um, a crystal, but what if in a case it's not a crystal? If they give you a liquid form, fine. If they give you in a crystal form, fine. So, but they must give you this, all right? All right, so you follow the procedure, but take note that once you dissolve this, in, once you add this inside the flux and add water, right? apparently to mix up if it is a crystal it's going to dissolve if it's a liquid it's going to mix up but like i said i don't really know if this is going to be a crystal or a liquid right but from the instruction they said dissolving so dissolving actually stands for um, crystals okay so you top up with water so this particular this particular sodium to your sulfate would be the one inside the burette remember every titration requires a burette and a flask all right most likely the unknown solution is always the one inside a flask most likely it's not always right but in this okay so the the known solution is the the standard solution sodium to sulfate so that's the one inside the burette now they gave us another instruction they say using a pipette introduce 10 ml of copper to ion into a conical flask then add 10 ml of water of 10 ml of solution of potassium iodide that you prepared Recall they had asked us earlier to prepare potassium iodide by dissolving one gram of this in 100 ml of water. So from this 100 ml, you're requested to take 10 ml and then add up to the flask that has 10 ml of copper to ion, then shake it. Finally, titrate, you can follow on with the instruction. So the values you're going to obtain here, right, was what I told us this was the one they got last year. Please make sure you carry out your experiments, right? Carry out the experiments and compare your answers. If they are the same, cool. If they are not the same, don't force it to be the same, right? If you verify from the next another DEX and then the error is not from you, please don't force your answer to be the same like the one we have on the screen, okay? All right, the average volume, this is what we'll go here. Now the calculation here is what I'm going to be taking time to explain. Please, once again, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so by hitting the subscribe button below. Thank you. All right, so molarity is same as saying molar concentration. All right, so look at what we have here. Now, recall, they said, I said mass concentration of, you know, sodium to sulfate equals to this. You may want to ask yourself, uh -uh, but I didn't really see any way that they gave us mass concentration. Hold up. If you look at this, it said dissolve 0.248 grams of sodium to sulfate in 100 ml. But if you dissolve this inside 100 ml, you have created a mass concentration. That means 0.248 grams per 100 ml. Okay, so that's how we got mass concentration to be 0.248 grams per 100 ml. But recall the, the unit of mass concentration is gram per liters. The unit of molar concentration is more per liter, right? So we need to convert the mass concentration, 0.248 grams per 100 ml, to grams per liter. For us to do that, we say gram per 100 ml. Um, for every 1,000 ml, we have 1 liters. So ml can, we can cancel ml, leaving us with liters. So we multiply by 1,000, we got 2.48 grams per liters. So mass concentration of sodium to sulfate is equal to this. All right, so the formula we're going to be making use of to get the molarity of this is mass concentration all over molar mass. Okay, mass concentration is this molar mass of sodium to sulfate. I have already solved that. It gave me 248 grams per mole. And how did I get the 248? Sodium is um, 23. But since we have two sodium here, 23 times 2 plus sulfur is 32 molar mass times 2. Um, oxygen is 16, 16 times 3 plus water is 18 grams, 16 plus 2, 18 times 5. If you add up everything here, it gives us 248. So you, your mass concentration 2.48 grams per liter 
molar mass is 24 grams per mole. So when you carry out your calculation, we got 0.01 mole per liter. So this is the answer for the question number one. Molarity of sodium thiosulfate is 0.01 mole. Now, one important stuff I would like to tell us is that, you see this question number one? If the instruction in the lab, or you get to the lab and you're being instructed to still use to still carry out by to, to still dissolve 0.248 grams of this in 100 mil. If that instruction still remains the same, if you were not asked to change this value, maybe you're asked to take an, a mass different from this. If you took 0.248 of this inside 100 mil, this calculation is correct. You can transcopy this particular one inside your manual, right? That is on the condition that they did not change this instruction. You guys still maintained. 0.248 grams per 100 mil. Okay. All right, question number two, they said mole ratio. Remember, um, for acid and base titration, we always have what we call, um, from the formula CAVA, all over CBVB equals to NA over all over NB. NA is the number of moles of acid. NB is the number of moles of base. So the NA is always, N and NB is always gotten from the balanced chemical equation. In the case of... Um, in the case of let's say I have um ACL plus NaOH, which will give me NaCl plus water. So this is one is to one. Alright. So in this case now, the in this case. You ask for the mole ratio between copper 2 plus and this thiosulfate ion. Now, the answer is 1 is to 1. How do we get 1 is to 1? All right, um, follow me. Let me show you. And recall from this equation, right? This is the equation of the reaction. Um, our copper here is 2, 2 plus, and our thiosulfate is still uh, is 2 molecules of this. So, this cancels this, so this gives me 1 is to 1, alright? So this is 2 moles, this is 2 moles, 2 is to 2 cancels itself, 1, 1, so that's how we got 1 is to 1 here. Okay, so now we've uh, gotten how we got 1 is to 1 here. Alright, so let's proceed question number 3. They said, um, determine the the molarity of copper 2 um, ion in solution analyzed. Okay, now before I proceed, I since the, the compound is lengthy, you could I decided to assign this guy one and this other one two. The reason is just to make it very easy for me to calculate this without stress. So sodium to sulfate ion, I represented it as one, copper 2 ion, I represented it as Sorry, sodium to sulfate solution, not ion. I represented this guy as one and copper two ion. I represented it as two. So that anyway you see mass one, V1, we are talking about sorry, not mass. Anyway, you see molarity one, M1. This is molarity of sodium to sulfate because to sulfate we assigned it a value of one. Anyway, you see V1, it is volume of this to sulfate solution. Anyway, you see M2, this is molarity of copper two ion, anyway, you see V2. This volume of um, copper 2 ion. So, M1, I say molarity of this. Now, the answer we got from the question number one, remember question number one, they asked us to solve for molarity of sodium to sulfate. So, this answer now, the answer we are going to get from this number one here is what we are going to have here, is what we have here as molarity of this. I even stated it here, obtained from equation, equation one calculation. Volume of to sulfate solution. Is 9.20 is not constant actually dependent on what you're going to get as your average titrate. Remember, it was the sodium thiosulfate that we were titrating, um, that we use in titrating against the um, copper 2 ion. So, this was what was in the flask. I'm sorry, this was what was in the burette that we made use of. The average volume that we made use of for the titration is 9.2. So, in the lab, your own might not necessarily be 9.2, but if you're lucky enough. And they don't nothing changes much this semester. I can still get this. So this 9.2 is what we placed here, obtained as average titrate. 
Now, M2, which is molarity of copper 2 ion, is what we are asked to find. So I'll put a question mark. V2 is the volume of copper 2 ion, 10 mil. Remember, this was the volume of pipette that we took. If you remember here, they said I'm um, using a pipette, introduce 10 mil of a provided solution of copper 2 ion. So the volume of copper 2 ion is 10 mil. Okay. So let's carry out our calculation. If we make this guy subject of the formula, we insert your value 0 0.01 times this, divided by this, we got 0 0.092 mole per liters. So that's the answer we got for this. All right, number four, they said grams of copper 2 ion originally dissolved per mil. Okay, so in, for us to solve this, we need to get the mass concentration of copper 2 ion first. Right, concentration of mass concentration is always um, grams per liter, but we were asking per mil. So first of all, get the gram per liter and later convert it to per mil. So for us to get the gram per liter concentration of copper 2 ion, we say molarity of this times molar mass. Molarity of this is actually what we got here. Molarity of copper 2 ion is what we got here. Now molar mass of copper 2, copper is actually 63.5. Okay, so when you carry out this multiplication, we have 0 0.584 grams per liter. Now remember, uh, you will not ask um, in per liter, they said originally dissolved per mil. So for us to get that, we're going to say this divided by liters times 1 liter of the value. So we divide by 1000. You notice this gram liters will cancel liters, leaving us with this. So we got 5.84 times 10 raised to the power of minus 4. Please remember, the sole aim of this um, video is to teach us how to carry out the calculation so that you don't end up transcribing what I have here directly into your manual. Just in a case where the, you know, your table, if your table is not the same as what I have here, you're not supposed to transcribe all of this. What you just need to do is to go through it, understand the procedures, and then carry it out by yourself. Okay, the last one, convert the volume of, um, the value of 3 to ppm. Now, what's the value of 3? We got um, 0 0.0092 more per liter of copper. They asking us to convert this to ppm. But well, we know that 1 ppm is milligrams per liters. And they asking us to convert more per liter of copper to salt, um, copper to ion to milligrams per liter. ppm is same as milligram per liter. So basically what I'm going to do is to convert this mole to grams, from grams to milligrams. Right? The liter remains constant. So this is a right 0.0092 mole per liter of copper 2 ion. What is the molar mass of copper? 63.5 grams per mole. I place it, I place a gram up and I place the mole down so that mole down can cancel this mole down, mole up, and they're leaving me with gram per liters. But ppm is milligrams per liter, so I need to convert these grams to milligrams. So I say 1000 milligrams divided by 1 grams. These grams cancels this. Even me with this. So when you multiply, we have 584 ppm. So that is it. So guys, please make sure that you carry out your experiments and what um, determines whether you're going to transcopy what I have you on the screen into your manual is if after carrying out your experiments, the titration itself and the values you got in your table you know, corresponds to what I have here. Otherwise, whatever you're going to have in your practicals, Please, you know, use the values, substitute where necessary to solve a question. All right, so that's the end of today's class. Uh, maybe subsequent practicals, I might try and conduct the live experiment if possible. Okay, please, um, for new subscribers, please kindly subscribe by hitting the subscribe button. Please hit, so, um, share, like, comment. If you have any question, please, you can drop it on the comment section, okay? So let's get to here. Maybe if you have any question, part you do not understand, you can drop it on the comment section. Please like the video and share. Thank you very much.